Hey guys, this is a video to talk a little bit about some of the parts of our lesson plan. I'm going to do a series of video on these. Uh, one of the very first things that you see on the lesson plan template is the central focus and concepts or skills related to the central focus. And that seems like really big and nebulous. So let's break that down a little bit. I mean, we're, we're going to do this in class too, but this video just sort of serves as a reminder, a resource that you can use uh, as you're going through creating your own lesson plans. A central focus is just a fancy way of saying, what is this lesson all about? Um, now, when we teach kids, we're usually teaching about more than just one thing. Even if we're teaching the same subject, say you want to be a high school choir director, well, yeah, we're going to be teaching about singing in choir. Well, great, but you're probably going to be teaching a lot of different things through the singing of choral music. What are those ideas that you're teaching about? What are those skills? What is it that you want the students to be able to understand or do? Um, those are things related to the central focus and the concepts or skills that are related to that central focus. And you're probably going to have more than one in every lesson that you teach. However, in our class, when you're, we're doing our peer teaching, you're going to be teaching portions of lessons. So you might not have a ton of central focuses up here. You might have just one or maybe two. So let's talk about what those things might be. If you go back to our Blackboard site and down on the left hand side, there is a, I don't know, I don't want to call it a tab, a section called resources. And one of the things in this resource section is called the Bergathon Scope and Sequence. Bergathon is just the author of a text that existed a long time ago. I don't make anybody buy it because uh, it's kind of outdated, but it does have this great scope and sequence chart. When somebody talks about scope and sequence, they just mean what do you teach and when? And so I always liked this textbook because I thought it had a decent way of organizing scope and sequence and how you would talk about it. So what they have down this left-hand margin of each page are what they call the elements of music. And a lot of teachers choose to teach music on an elemental level where they say, you know, here are the things that we want kids to know about music. We want them to know about timbre, dynamics, articulation, rhythm, melody, harmony, texture, and form, uh, even expression or time and place. Um, sometimes there are different words that mean those things. Some people like the, the word time for rhythm, um, and I think I'm okay with that. Some people might put something like articulation in style or expression. I'm okay with that too. Um, but as far as a central focus goes, is there a way of narrowing it down from just saying, well, you know what, I'm going to be teaching about rhythm today. Well, yeah, I mean, you could leave it as rhythm, but you might say you're teaching fourth graders and what you want them to know about is the difference between simple and complex meter, or maybe six eight meter is something that you want to focus specifically on. You could put that up here in the central focus. Now, some people like to elaborate on their central focus more, and some people like to leave it a little bit more cut and dry. Um, I just want it to be kind of specific. Let's say let's use an example in this lesson and say we're going to focus on kindergartners uh, demonstrating a steady beat. So my central focus, yes, it would be rhythm, but I think I'm going to specify and say steady beat. Okay, great. Now, what do I want kindergartners to be able to do? Like, what's the main idea that I want them to understand about steady beat? That's kind of where things like these concept statements can help you decide. Um, so it might be something like music may be comparatively fast or slow depending on the speed of the underlying pulse. Well, that's an idea of knowing the difference between fast and slow, knowing the difference between fast er and slow er. Um, so what do I want these kindergartners to know? Well, I could work back here 
and say, ooh, I would want them to maintain a steady beat while singing or playing. That's a behavior that I want them to be able to do. That's kind of like a skill. So is it a concept I want them to understand? Or is it a skill that I want them to be able to do? Or maybe it's both. So let me go back here and say the concept or skill that I want students to be able to understand is that music has a steady pulse. Now that's most of the time. We have some times where music doesn't have a steady pulse, but today in kindergarten, I want them to understand that music has a steady pulse. And a skill that I want them to be able to have is Okay, well, do I want to use pulse or beat? Let's use beat. Let's be keeping a steady beat. So I want to make sure that I under, that I not copyright. That's my concept and that's my skill. Now in some lessons, you only have a concept. In some lessons, you only have a skill. Um, but this time, I, I want to have both of them and that's all right. You know, my prior knowledge related to the concept might be like, hey, kids have listened to music before. Maybe we have never talked about steady beat before. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about common misunderstandings and errors and how you address them later. Um, but for right now, you know, steady beat. Music has a steady beat. Keeping a steady beat is the skill that I want students to have. Let's take a different one. Let's look back at the Bergathon scope and sequence and do another central focus and concepts and or skills as related to that central focus. Let's see. How about one based on... How about timbre? Timbre is one of my favorite ones, um, and it's a great one to do with younger children. So the idea of... These are concepts related to timbre. How about the quality of sound is affected by the material size and or shape and size of the source? So let's go back to our lesson plan, maybe. My central focus then, maybe there's only one of those things that I want students to understand. In this case, I could just put timbre. Right, my central focus is on timbre and the concept that I want students to be able to um, experience today and I want to give them more familiarity with is that um, the size of an instrument affects the way it sounds. Maybe those are the ideas that I want my students to have an understanding of today. So when I get down into my learning objectives eventually, I'm going to have activities that are related to those things. That's what I want my students to be experiencing. Um, so I'm going to lead them through activities that involve the sizes of instruments and how that affects the way that the instrument sounds. So you could have that. So your central focus in that case might just be timbre. Um, and then we've got the size of an instrument affects the way it sounds. How about another one? Mm, 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 mm. Maybe I want to do something with how about first graders or maybe second graders even. So let's look at something that I might do in second grade. I might be thinking about meter in second grade. I want students to understand more about meter. Well, in this case, if I want to do second grade, I don't want to just say timbre. I mean, because I could put rhythm and just say, well, it's all about rhythm today. But instead, maybe I want to say that it's about meter. And if I want students to be able to group their like pulses in a certain way, they want to organize the pulses to make 
different meters or to understand that there is that grouping, I, I can go back to that concept statement and say a series of pulses may be organized into regular or irregular groupings by stressing certain pulses. Great. Now one of the reasons I actually really like this Bergathon scope and sequence is because it kind of tells you here's what kids would need to be able to perform related to this. Here's what they would describe. Here's how they might create as related to those things. Um, so yeah, a series of pulses may be organized into regular groupings by stressing certain pulses. Maybe that's what I want my kids to understand today. So, you know, I would type that in here. And then my learning objectives would be related to that. A series of, meh, it's me going back and forth. A series of pulses may be organized. By stressing certain pulses. So the activities that I'm going to have in this case, you know, they're going to be related to the kids doing things with meter. Now, this also gets into the idea of prior knowledge. I am going to address that just a little bit in this case. If a series of pulses have to be organized into regular or irregular patterns by stressing certain pulses, what do I absolutely need to have in order to get this understanding? Well, I've got to know... Right? Students have to have a familiarity with and an ability to maintain a steady beat. There's no way for them to understand meter without understanding steady beat first. So that's definitely something that they have to have. If you don't have steady beat, you can't do meter. So, you know, sometimes our central focus can just be, you know, a one word term. Um, and sometimes we can expand upon it a little bit more. And then our concepts or skills related to the central focus, you know, then sort of gets down into the musical truth that we want the students to learn about the thing. Or a skill might be, you know, their ability to do something related to that central focus um, because sometimes it is just a scale sometimes it's like hey man we want the kids to be able to um, play the fingering for you know C on the third space of the staff on the recorder that's a skill and that's the thing sometimes I want them to be able to do um, what's that related to well you know sometimes it's not directly related to our central focus but sometimes it's a skill that they have to have in order for them to do the other thing now if I want them to create pentatonic melodies and maybe it includes that C we're like well guess what they gotta have that so that might be the skill that I would put in there if I were doing a different lesson right now I don't think they need to have that skill. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so that's just a little reminder for you of what a central focus is and concepts that might be related to a central focus and then how that then, you know, gets into prior knowledge related to that concept. So you know, if you ever need this, come on back, come on back to it and uh, watch this video and or come on in and see me, send me an email, um, whatever it is. I'm here to help. Please ask. Have a great day, guys.